another very odd SNL last night. Uh, the big Christmas spectacular was sort of anything but, but they tried their best. Um, TMZ reports that multiple SNL staffers had tested positive for COVID. So Lauren Michaels decided to pull the live audience uh, and most of the cast. Tom Hanks and Tina Fey opened the show explaining most of this. And then they inducted Paul Rudd into the Five Timers Club. Mm. I think from what I saw, the only other cast member there besides Michael Shea, was Kenan Thompson. Uh, most of the show was best of previous holiday episodes with a um, a few fresh pre-recorded videos from earlier in the week. Tina stuck around to do Weekend Update with Michael Che, and they did it on stage in, like, director's chairs to an audience of Tom Hanks, Kenan Thompson, <sighs> and Paul Rudd. It's and a lot of pressure to laugh at all. It's, it's, wow. It was just a very odd... Uh, I'll, I'll show you a clip that they kind of explain what's going on. And Tina was going to do an update with me because Colin is not here tonight. It's not what you think. He's having work done. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought we'd read these dumb jokes anyway and just see if we can make these guys laugh. Yeah, you guys ready? <laughs> you. Yeah. Hanks, Let's are go. you ready? May I call you Hanks? I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> okay. And can we confirm that you have never heard these jokes before? Not a once, except the two you blew in the rehearsal. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> That's how they did Weekend Update. Well, was somebody else laughing? They have crew. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's good. I think yeah, that was about it. It like a canned laughter in there. I mean, For writers do that. backstage? Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, it's on with Omicron, man. Everyone's getting it. I hear it's it's like 70, hmm, I'm trying to think what that number was. Maybe 70 times more transmissible than Delta. Mm, so lovely. super transmissible, but, but not, not harsh. Not hospital inducing for the most part. No. So the good, the good news is many of the people who I've – so there's, there's, two, um, there's two crews. You can, you can listen to the sort of official line, and then you can listen to guys like Alex Berenson who's been on the show. And they're, the Alex Berenson's are always ahead of what's coming next. So they'll be going, here's, what's, here's what we're doing. And then Alex Berenson, three months before that, I go, now nah, everyone's going to have to get extra vaccinations. Sure. The vaccines wear off. All this shit's going on in Israel. They already got the data. They're not giving it to us in real time because it, you know, so it's everyone get vaxxed and this thing will go away. And Stand he's going, it's not, it's not going anywhere. It's, it's not our going new away. Flu strain. Well, it's our new... it, it looks like everyone's going to have to get it. So why not get the less virulent version of it that is super contagious? So a lot of the guys early on with Omicron went, this may be the way out. Mm -hmm. Everyone will get it. They won't be devastated by logic. it. Uh, because, uh, like, I was. There's some statistics like NHL's getting slammed by the hockey league's getting slammed by this, NFL's getting slammed by this, uh, NFL's getting slammed by this, NHL's like 100% vaccinated, they're getting slammed, uh, NFL is like 95% vaxxed, and uh, NBA is like 97%. They're all vaxxed up, and right. they're all getting they're all getting slammed. So you're gonna get it. You may have a probably going to have a better reaction yeah. if you're vaxxed up. Speaking of 90 Day Fiance, I think that's what he's from. I don't know if, if you watch the series, but there was a news story over the weekend that one of the guys who was kind of one of the breakout stars died from it and the reports that he wasn't vaccinated. So I think that's the point. Get it. Get boosted. Get vaxxed. You'll probably get it. You're going to survive and you won't be on a ventilator. I think everyone in New York is going to get it. They're all waiting in line now. They shut down Broadway, Gina Graham. I know. Again, I know. But maybe we're getting back to uh, chicken pox parties or whatever that's they had what, back in the I day. I think everyone's just going to have to get it. And uh, if you're vaxxed, you'll you'll be fine. And I, Or even if you're not, if it's mild, you'll probably be good if you're not fat and youngish. Well, I got it from Beth and Katie, and we had to go to Rob and Stacy's. That was mm. very normal. You go, just go to the next kid's house. In Scissor. Obviously. Okay. Okay. Uh, Draco, probably not a name that you were familiar with, but rapper uh, Draco the Ruler reportedly dead <sighs> following a backstage stabbing attack at Los Angeles's Once Upon a Time Festival concert. That was yesterday as we record this. He ripped that name off from Harry Potter. Draco Did the he? Ruler? Drape Greco Malfoy. Oh, there you He's, go. Uh, the nominal villain. You're mm -hmm. that nerd. Mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, there, were, there were Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, 50 Cent. Everybody was supposed to go on. TMZ reports that the singer whose real name is Daryl Caldwell died at the hospital from his injuries. The LA Times identifies the victim as rapper Draco the Ruler, reporting he was attacked by a group of people while backstage, stabbed in the neck, 
and was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Um, who are I? Who are the folks who can stab someone in the neck? I feel like that's a certain breed of cat. Cold you know blooded. I mean? like, could no, you that's, imagine that's just fucking... plunging a knife into someone's neck? No, I cannot. Short of choking the death, I'd imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Veins of ice. So Snoop Dogg canceled his set. Uh, this was at Exposition Park. And mm-hmm. uh, the rest of the show was canceled. They had probably another hour to go. My neighbor looking like a hot ass thirst trap on her way there yesterday. I didn't see her come home, but apparently people, you know, the rumblings in the crowd, somebody was stabbed and then, you know, people are hopping over the fence to get out of there. Did, do you think it was like someone's crew? I mean, who? Probably. I mean, this was backstage. They had so laminates? <laughs> I'll find out. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are with me, but... Uh, Whenever I got the laminate, everyone was like, oh, let's get a picture. And then at some point, the guy's taking the picture and goes, oh, hold on, hold on. And he always comes up to me and pulls the laminate sure. off. I was like, I like the laminate. It's yeah. a little time date stamp. Right. This oh, is, you know where you were. Yeah, absolutely. I'm all over the place. I do a little drinking mm-hmm. on the road. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure where that picture's from. That. <laughs> but I want that laminate. Yeah. I still have all my Corolla Cruz laminates and my Laughs With Ball Brian oh, laminate. Oh, how about you? Yeah. How about so stabbed in the neck and dead. Yep. And we'll figure Show out canceled. who did it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jake Paul back in the news. YouTuber Jake Paul knocked out former UFC welterweight champion Tyron Woodley in the sixth round in Tampa, Florida, Saturday night. I'm going to show you the clip. I don't know if you've seen it yet. It is crazy. No, I haven't Um, seen it. Fox News reports that the fight ended suddenly after Paul threw a hard right, sending Woodley face first into the mat. Uh, Paul previously beat Woodley last summer via split decision. Um, This is just, I don't know, 10 seconds. You'll see the knockout. He has done it from time to time. Just every bit of... Oh! Overhand right. And it's literally like, I mean, he, his face broke the fall. Yeah, that was straight. That was straight down. Yeah, Tyrone Woodley was, he was the king of the octagon like six, seven years ago. He was really on a roll, pretty unbeatable, like just dominant. And then he got knocked out and then he just keeps getting knocked out and it's, it's okay. time to hang up the gloves. Well, if you want to hear some conspiracy theories, the other thing that was sort of trending is that fight was rigged. It was rigged. And I, like an idiot, went on Reddit to see what all the hubbub was about. Get ready to play that clip again, because I think what some people are referring to is right before Jake hits him, you see him like twist his hands. And mm-hmm. that's like a sign, like I'm going for the knockout. I don't know. But let's watch it again. Who twists his hands? Jake. Uh, like he just did some little nah, twist move. No, nah, that's just overhead. He Reddit just... feels strongly about this not being a. Uh, nah. I don't know. You, you don't need to get hit that hard. I mean, you know, Sonny Liston probably took a dive against Muhammad Ali, and people don't even know where the – they didn't see the right. punch. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, there's a lot easier ways sure. to take a dive right. than a clean shot right right behind the ear with a big overhand right. And if you're signaling him, that's a very subtle signal. Like yeah. You could have made it much more obvious. You're not going to yeah. get an argument out of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff Garland in the news uh, with a – with a couple of fantastic quotes. Uh, Sony Pictures Television has terminated him from the ABC sitcom The Goldbergs. His departure is effective immediately. The Goldbergs will be without the family's father in the middle of the show's ninth season. Kind of a little bit of a Roseanne, the Connors situation. Cast learned of Garland's departure during Wednesday's production meeting. HR investigated Jeff Garland following a series of allegations about on-set misconduct. Following the probe, it became clear that he had to go. Garland did not dispute this. He supposedly said it was mutual. Um, asked what happened, Garland said in an interview, "We There's have no dip- such yeah. thing as like a, a probe that ever works out, yeah. really, because it, it used to be the probe used to be have you fucked any intern? <laughs> now it's like were you a douche? Yeah, when you were getting trail mix, yeah. to an intern." Or when somebody banged on your dressing room door, did you fucking yell and just go away? I'm on the phone or whatever. Like if now the probe figures out whether you're a douche. Mm-hmm. Now here's the thing about Roseanne Barr <laughs> or Jeff Garland. All comedians are douches <laughs> when they're not pretending to be happy and funny There's and carefree. Yeah. They're all pretty shitty and douchey Ellen when Rosie. they're wearing their fucking Crocs and their sweatpants. They got up to that's also um they never really factor this in, but um, comedy and stand-up comedy, that's a, that's a late night. 
That's uh, a that's a nighttime thing. Drunk. You got to be on at Hollywood Center Studios at six forty five for fucking hair and makeup. They're not morning right. people. They're in a bad. They're in that fucking bad morning mood. You got five or six hours of sleep. Yeah. They're, they're comedians. They're douchey in the first place. And all we have to do is is prove again. We don't have to prove that you threatened anyone physically or fucked anyone. We just have to prove that you're a douche yeah. to people who got who were underlings. And by the way, everyone's an underling because you're True. the star of the yeah. fucking show. Yeah. So every, all the people you're dealing with is a craft service person or Make the props up. or whatever. And in fact, you are a douche. And you should be nice, but the probe reveals that you were disrespectful. Right. Or you didn't treat them with this, with that, which never happened. Well, let's let's hear a couple of quotes from Garland himself. He was, uh... and also comedians, many of them, Garland's this way, Tim Allen's this way. Their shtick, it's 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 not really my shtick. It's not a lot of comedians, but some have that shtick where they. They roast people a little. Like, where'd mm. you get that dress? The five and dime, you mm. know, like they'll do it. And now, by the way, when you write that down in a transcript, it seems pretty shitty yeah. to say. But Rude. when they're saying it, they're fucking around. Sure. They they're think taking they're, the bust, piss they're out busting, blo- busting balls. Yeah. yeah. So in the first, uh, he said in an interview, the first quote, we have a difference of opinion, Sony and myself. My opinion is I have my process about how I'm funny in terms of the scene and what I have to do. They feel it makes for a, quote, unsafe workspace. And then in the Variety magazine, he defended his uh, alleged actions as silly, said he was a hugger and had not been told about any aversion to this practice, oh, even while admitting that the show's human resource department has spoken to him three times in the last three years yeah. about his conduct. Three right. times, fool. I'd love to. I'd love to go back in the past and explain about our black simile professor being fired and this guy's a hugger. That's a problem. <laughs> Really? What do you do? <laughs> he hugs a hugger. Well, I certainly hope that we look at overly <sighs> huggy males more harshly than women. Yeah. Because if I ever run for anything yeah. or if I get super famous, I mean, who have I not jumped on just to say hello? I, I like I like a hug. I like a bring it in. I don't want to get uh, blacklisted. Yeah. And I think it's like I'm not a hugger. I'm a drug her and then bang her in my trailer. <laughs> Yeah, that's you know what, what we I mean? that that when, when I speak to the people Und- from uh, HR. I that's understand. what I say. Don't yeah. say that. Uh, don't say it. I wouldn't say that to HR. I'm not a hugger. Well, they know I'm a comedian. Right. I'm not a hugger. I'm a drug her <laughs> into my trailer and banger. You might get a chortle, but you'll definitely get arrested. But they know it's there's a context because I'm a comedian. Right. Like Jeff Garland. Can we suspend it with pay? Yeah. Right. So uh, they got rid of Callen, too. They've had. Oh, right. Brian Callen got right. a little, he got kind of half toed. That was a while ago, yeah? <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, was that around the sort of Crystal Lee, Brian Callen? I feel yeah, like that there's, there's, some, there's some half toed people. Yeah. They weren't all me toed, but me they were like kind of sort of in there yeah. or something. So uh, they're thinning the herd over yeah. there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Ooh, now opening for Ted McGinley. That's right. <laughs> oh, he'll is he still step acting? up. Is he still working? He I mean, didn't act when he was right. acting, Brian. Come on, <laughs> he's a face man. A really he's like point. me. It's you know what I mean? Right. He's a look. He's an attitude. Yep. He's a style. Yeah, yeah. you got to bring he's in a vibe, demographic. You know, yeah. response to that. Yes. I bet. I, but he steps in yes. season whatever yes. when the when the dad leaves. God, I bet he's aged like mm-hmm. a fine wine. Mm. Then there's. Uh, and Valerie Harper. Yeah. She stepped in. Yeah. For Rhoda? No, she stepped in for what? Duncan family or whatever. Oh, Sandy that, D- Hogan family. The Hogan family. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. God, I'd, I'd love to see a recent picture of Ted McGinley. I wish we could have done that, you know, in my family. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like season four of me being on the planet. Hey, mom, you're out. We're going another direction here. <laughs> We're looking for someone who cooks. Yeah. Has a little better demeanor, possibly a hugger. Mm-hmm. Either way. Florence Henderson, in. Florence Henderson, you're in. Mom, mm-hmm. out. Dad, uh, sorry, but James Brolin is going to be playing your part. He likes, <laughs> he likes He's got a four-by truck. He's got a Malamute. Yeah. <laughs> he likes camping. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, you guys. We're, yeah. just, we're going a different direction. Yeah, d- creative differences. That's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a great idea. Man, I wish we could have done that back in the day. That would have been awesome. Mm. Uh, so not a lot of news, at least that we've talked about since the Texas abortion ban and sort of the way they've tied the hands of people uh, to sort of tell on each other and collect a bounty. Well, 
it doesn't seem like a great idea or a great precedent, except to Governor Newsom. He's actually down with this idea, not for the abortion bill, but for ghost guns and for assault weapons. He's basically saying, um, if that's the precedent, then we'll let Californians sue those who put ghost guns and assault weapons on our streets. If Texas can born a if, if Texas can ban abortion and endanger lives, California can ban deadly weapons of war and save lives. So are we all going to adopt this Fakakta idea? Well, you know, if you really think about it, I was... Uh, we got to remind me, Max Pat, we'll get into um, Gilded Cage for the minimum wage Gilded Cage chapter for 50 Years All Be Chicks. I saw this thing coming like 12 years ago. I was saying to actually Dr. Drew... Uh, during some of the uh, 26 hours I was watching volleyball, I, I said, you know, we're in this thing where COVID has deputized a lot of fucking people to tell, yeah. you know, put the sure, mask up. You know, I've never had more people who are, you know, scratching out a living, mm -hmm. telling people that we're paying a little more in taxes, uh, here's what you need to do. And, and, and citizen on citizen, just passing oh, yeah. somebody on a trail or something, hey, mask up, you know. I mean, it's funny. You can kind of tell neighborhood to neighborhood, but like I got a friend who lived in Venice and he said, you go jogging in Venice, you get told the mask. Yeah. Now, La Cunada, different demo, not so much, but where you are, you'll get. So we're in a new deputization of people era, abortions and ghost guns and masks and Kyle Rittenhouse. I'm yeah. Me and, uh, me and, uh, Mike were on the, the shuttle and, uh, going to LAX and had the, had the couple tell, tell Mike and me to get the mask up and, you know, it, we're there. So we're on, it's on. Like yeah. Maybe everyone's, maybe that's the new era. You're like, a, like we're all that sort of, it's just a militia well, now. Well, that's why I like, and it's not the NRA. It's another coalition, um, Firearms Policy Coalition. That's mm. why I like the intellectual honesty of those guys who are coming out in support of, of the... Uh, support's the wrong word because I'm going to do a double negative. Who are coming out against the Texas abortion law. Mm -hmm. Because they said, you know, this isn't our cause, but we're next. And oh, we don't yeah. want to we don't want this to be the new normal when it comes to taking away people's rights. So whether we agree with abortion or disagree, we don't want this to become a precedent. So we're against this. We're going to be. And also we're talking about making California an abortion sanctuary state where we're going to go come here. Mm -hmm. We'll get you. We'll pay for the hotel room. We'll pay oh. for the ticket and you can come here and drop off your fetus and we'll, we'll do it. So it, yeah, everything always creates something, sure. something else. Lockable. That's, that's how it works. No, you're right. And I know this wasn't the original topic, but you know, what's interesting, which as someone who's never been pregnant, I've never really thought about, um, there, there's a lot of like, you know, abortion causes trauma. And I imagine for some people that's true. But then I read an article saying, you think abortion causes trauma? What about being told you have to carry this baby to term and give it away? Because everyone says like, oh, adoption, it's easy, just do adoption. I, I feel it would be much more traumatic to be told you must carry this baby. And now you must, you know, if you can't care for it figure out someone who can. I, I think that's probably pretty traumatic. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I th uh, adoption's yeah, weird. Everyone true. has their own kind of head on adoption. Like, you know, some kids feel lesser than because yeah. they're adopted. I'm like, I don't know. I, I feel like you should love your adopted parents. Like <laughs> sure. they, they didn't forget to pull out. They went through a big, long procedure to get you oh, into, their, rejected many times. And into Crawford, their lives. That's a line and then mommy dearest. Some women, it seems very noble yes. to do that. And then others have, and it's like abortion. Some people, some people would be devastated mm -hmm. by abortion. Some people don't think about right. it that much. I, I, maybe it's about religion. Well, I don't know. Yeah. And it's interesting too, because I, a couple people brought this up online. Um, and again, this is not something I've experienced, so I, I can't say for sure, but you know, I would imagine, you know, people said, well, then how about why when women miscarriage, have a miscarriage, are they so devastated? And I said, I think it's because the I the idea of what they were about to have is now gone. It, it might not be the collection of cells per se. I don't know. But it's their all their hopes and dreams were wrapped up in this idea. And that idea is no longer 
Well, they were the, the devastated by the miscarriage people. The people are trying to get pregnant. That's right. So now you're not. Yeah, it's it's, just, it's all very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, one more. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, since we were talking about Springsteen, let's uh, applaud him because he's a hardworking blue collar guy, and I think he's going to land on his feet now. After a month of rumors, Springsteen has struck a deal to sell his master recordings and publishing to Sony Music for. $500 million. Billboard estimates that Springsteen's catalog averages $12 million in sales a year, combined with $7.5 million a year from publishing, which would value at about four hundred fifteen. dollars So they want to put a little sugar on top. I like that La Mirada song. <laughs> That's right. right. What's it really called? I'm a rocker. I'm a rocker. Uh, Springsteen has remained with Sony's Columbia Records since he launched his career and was given ownership of his earlier albums back in the 80s as part of one of his contracts. The $500 million deal tops all other deals that artists have struck in selling their publishing rights in the past year. I will. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Bob Dylan, Paul Simon, Stevie Nicks, Lindsey Buckingham, Mick Fleetwood, Neil Young, David Crosby. I will... uh... First of all, it's got to be a nice little retirement nest egg. No, oh, you're yeah. just going to sell your catalog. And it's all fine with me. I'll okay the deal. But oh. when you're giving the speech up on stage about how they closed the mill, yeah. Yeah. my dad came home with his hat in his hand. He said, son, we're eating beans tonight. I need you to work the $500 million catalog <laughs> sale. So after taxes... Oh. And also you got to pay... Well, take go ahead and take 10% off because right. the lawyer's getting mm-hmm. that. Let's call it 200. Yeah, let's call it 200. <laughs> Two, 300 <laughs> million. million. Yeah, just work that into the story about the mill closing. I think that's fair. All right, let's bring it home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. Super Bowl's coming soon enough. Yes, it is. Looking forward to some Jeep commercials mm-hmm. and stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Looking, looking forward to that stuff. All right, uh, Portland, Helium, coming up this Wednesday, Thursday. We're all going to be there doing live podcasts and live stand-up. You can watch Dawson get drunk in real time, everybody. So, uh, You're going to be on the flight? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Helium Comedy Club, we'll see you this Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, also, you can check out our chassis channel, 687 on Pluto TV. You can watch Uppity and Shelby American, the 24-hour war, Nikki Lada dot. Doc, it's all it's all there, and going racing with Adam Carolla. It's a fun show to watch there as well. You can watch uh, Truth Yeller. You can go to uh, dailywire.com slash Adam and sign up for membership. Until next time, Adam Carolla for Stephanie Motto and Gina Grad and Ball Brian say it. Mahala. It was basically like an MMA fighter who doesn't want any trouble, but you somebody somebody, somebody, bring it. somebody yeah. just fucking bumped him at a bar right. and spilled a beer on him. And, with Kane. Told him to go fuck himself. Told him to go fuck himself. <laughs> and so Jimmy worked on his first fart as we we're like going up the freeway on ramp uh, out of Toluca Lake and uh, T Chance just looked over his shoulder and said, Oh, is it on? <laughs> <laughs>